Now we'll get started on chapter three for the book. And this is gonna focus on how to explore data. How you do that will depend a lot on what type of data you have or in the class of object that the data is stored in. So we'll look through that and we'll look a lot in this section on how to, to identify and work with different data types in terms of vectors or columns and data frames. Um, we'll also look for data exploration about how to make summaries based on those and also to do some simple statistics if we're working with data that's a numeric type. So things like the mean and the minimum and maximum and the standard deviation. Finally, we'll talk a little bit this week about how to start exploring your data with plots. Now, we're not going to make plots that are particularly pretty. Instead, we'll focus just on ones that are functional in terms of exploring your data. And then in the next chapter of the book, we go a lot more into visualization and some of the principles behind that and how to start uh, working with R to make things that will be better for publication and to share and communicate with other people. But for this week, we'll look, we'll get started with plotting, but it really, again, will be just to explore your own data. We're going to work with the data set um, that is from a, a air pollution monitor at the U.S. Embassy in Beijing. And this is one that I find interesting because I've used this data set before to do some epidemiological research on the relationship between air pollution and human health in that country. Um, and I've actually gotten the chance to go to this embassy and to kind of see this particular monitor in place. So this is one of a series of monitors that are on different missions or embassies that the U.S. has around the world. You can go to find out some more at this link. So let's visit that. And uh, right now you can see, so, so what I have in the slide is from a few years ago. And uh, in this case, it's showing, I picked this out specifically because it's got a wide range of air pollution levels there. Because we're going to be looking both at the value, so this is measuring uh, PM 2.5 using micrograms per cubic meter. But you can also translate that into something called an air quality index, an AQI. So that ends up having different categories like healthy, unhealthy for certain groups, and um, unhealthy overall and it even has a category called beyond index if you get above a certain level. So we're going to look at how we can take these values and then create a new column that breaks into those AQI levels. So I think this data has a lot of interesting features like we've got date times that we'll be bringing in and then we've got numeric values with the PM 2.5 concentrations but then this kind of factor value where we have different categories for for the AQI so it should be nice to work with. Now as a note, we can again go and take a look at the web page for this. And I think one interesting thing to point out is that actually right now, I'm recording this in, in the fall of 2020, um, the air quality index is pretty good over the past 24 hours or so in Beijing. And by contrast, right now, I'm in Fort Collins, Colorado, and we've had some wildfires here. And so for the past few weeks, we've actually had the AQI going up more into those unhealthy levels. If you scroll down after you visit this page, you can see how the PM 2.5 values, how those map across to uh, the different AQI levels. So for example, if the PM 2.5 value is between 0 and 50, then that's an AQI of good. If it's 51 to 100, that's an AQI of moderate. And so far, all the way until we get to this beyond index value. And then in the plot, they've kind of lined that up by color. So you can see that these values, the AQI was good. And then for these, it's in that next level of moderate. I'm asking you to pull a version of this data that's again from 2017, I believe, where it's got an interesting range of air pollution levels. So you can pull that by clicking on the link here in the slides. That will take you to uh, the GitHub page, a, a page within that for the GitHub repository for this book. You can see that that's got that CSV for the end. So this is a flat file. It's, ser it's stored on the servers of GitHub rather than on your computer, but it's still got that kind of flat file format. So to get that onto your computer, you can go to File in your browser and Save Page As. Do double check to make sure if there's a format option that it's not going to save it as something like HTML, but it, it, it should uh, default to do a flat file format. So we can save it, and in this case, I will save that to my desktop.
And then we can move that in. If you set up in earlier video lectures an R project named Practice R, we can actually take this and move it into data. And we'll see, I might already have a copy in there. Yes. I'll replace in this case. So now we have in this practice R, we've got the data set, and it includes that data that we want. I've got some more slides here where I will show how you can read this in, and then we'll do a few things to clean it up. So you're welcome to use these next few slides to take notes on the process that we're doing, but I'm going to move in and we will do most of that in our studio so let me come in here and we'll open and we want to make sure we open inside that project so we'll be in the right working directory so we'll open that up and now i'm going to do a script so i could save this if i want it for later so I'll first load a couple of libraries i know that we're going to use reader to read this in and then we're also going to want to use the uh, dplyr to clean it up just a little bit so the first step is to read the data in, and I'll read it in as an object called Beijing PM Raw. If we go over and look at the data, again from the home directory, you can see right here that we're in practice R, it's in a subdirectory called data, and then this is the file, and if we want we can do view file, and that'll let us look at it a little bit. So we can tell both from the file extension and also from looking at it, it definitely looks like comma separated values. I think the funky thing going on over here is that that's maybe using some Greek letters for the micrograms per, per uh, cubic meter and, and a superscript for this. And that's just not read in very well in the flat file format. But we're going to clean that off anyway, so we won't worry too much about it. The thing we do need to worry about, though, is that there are a few lines up at the top before we get into the data. And so we're going to want to skip those. So it looks like the first line we want to read in is the fourth line. This definitely looks like it has column names in it, so we'll skip the lines above that. So let me go in, since it's a comma separated value, we can use read underscore CSV, and then I can put in the file equals, and I'll use tab completion to go through, maybe I should use my quotation marks first, there we go, data, and then I can use it again, and we want this Beijing. Data. And then I need to put in the option for skip equals three to skip over those first three lines and start reading at the four. Before I assign this, I can highlight just this part and check. I'll come down here. This looks like it works great and it's reading in exactly what we want. And the column names are checking out as the column names we want. So I'll go ahead and do this now. Now let's take a look at the data and see how we might want to clean it up. So for right now, we're only going to use three of the columns. We'll use this column on date. That includes the date and the time. And once we have that, we don't need these separate pieces about year, month, day, and hour. So we'll keep the date. We'll keep value as well. This one is actually the PM 2.5 value at each of those time points. The other thing that we'll keep is this QC. I think this is doing a quality control and it's saying when the equipment might not have been working correctly, so when maybe we shouldn't trust one of the measurements that's included in value. For some of the others, like site just repeats itself and the parameter in this data set just repeats itself, and the same for the unit. So we'll, we'll get rid of those for right now. Um, those aren't something we necessarily need. So let's go down and we'll do Beijing PM this time. And we'll start with that Beijing PM raw. And then the first thing that I want to do is I want to rename some of these column names. So I'll only rename the column names that I want to keep. But you can see we've got things down here that are going to be inconvenient. So um, the value one, we could replace this and take out that uppercase, so have it all lowercase, and that'll be a little bit nicer. But the bigger problems are coming here with the date and here with the QC name. So for both of these, we have elements in the column name that are not allowed in object names in R. So things like spaces and parentheses. Because of that, when it prints it out, it's actually surrounding it in these back ticks. That provides some protection so you can have those unusual things inside. But we don't want to have to use back ticks every time we call these columns, so we'll rename them to something simpler. So let me start, and I'll do sample time for the first one. And then we need to, even when we're referring to it and rename, we need to make sure that we still protect that full name. So I'll copy and paste it, but you can see it's got those back ticks. 
surrounding it. And by contrast, if you look at the raw data set, you can see it doesn't have back ticks. That's really something that's being added in this case to protect those special values in the name. All right, next we want to keep values, so we'll do that. But that one's pretty simple. We're just changing so that it's all lowercase. And then the last thing, I'll name QC. And that one's going to replace this QC name, so we can bring that in. All right, again, I'll just highlight and run to make sure I'm getting what I want before I go through and reassign this. And this looks great. You can see that the column name here, here, and here have been changed like I want. And next we'll do that select to pick out just those three. So we want sample time, and then we want value. And you can see it's actually doing um, tab completion for these column names. It's recognizing those. All right, so let's take a look at that. So that all looks great. This is exactly what we want. We're down to just those three columns now. So the next step is we want to add on one more column. So we'll use mutate for that. And this one's going to be a function of the value. So if you remember from that, uh, from that website, we can go back and take a look at it perhaps. We've got these certain cut points that we can use to figure out the AQI based on the PM 2.5 value. So that's what we'll use. And there is a function that lets you do that called cut and R. So we can come over and look at the help file. That is in base R. It takes a numeric vector and it will divide it and give you kind of like um, factor levels based on where it falls in certain ranges. So we give the cut. So if we want to have something from 0 to 50 and then 50 to 100, we'll do cuts of 0, 50, 100, and so on. And then we can say what labels we want for that. So this is going to be a function of this PM 2.5 value. So we'll do, um, we'll, and we'll name this AQI. We're adding a new column here, so we need to pick the column name. So we'll, we want to create a new column called AQI, and we'll do it using this cut function as a function of value. So cut's going to look at value in each case and see where it falls in these breaks we set up, and then give it a label based on that. So the breaks that we want, these are all defined by where those break points are in the definition of the AQI level. So it's 0, 50, 100, 150, uh, I believe 200, 300, 500. And then every now and then there'll be a value above that top level, and that's called beyond index. But that could go infinitely high. So we'll actually use INF, which stands for infinite. Then we need to use labels. And so these will be those values. There'll be one less of these than there are for the breaks because these are the values that go for if something's in between those two breaks. So the lowest one is good. And then we have moderate. And we have unhealthy for some groups. And then we have unhealthy. And the implication there is that that's a level that's unhealthy for anybody. And then we move to very unhealthy. These are levels, by the way, that are used worldwide now, um, including in the United States. And then hazardous. And then finally, we've got that beyond index. All right, so let's see. I think I did that all right. But again, let's highlight everything before we assign. Great. So this is exactly what we want, where now, because this one is above 500, it's been coded into that beyond index value. Whereas if uh, oh, these are in between, um, let's see, 300 and 500. And so these are ones that are going into that hazardous category. And you can see right here, it's coded that as a factor. So the last thing we'll do is we'll run this, um, the whole thing, including the assignment error. So we could either run from any place, if our cursor's any place in these lines, or if we want to be safe, we can highlight everything and then do control return. And then we can come down here and just print it out and make sure that it looks okay. And that does, that's exactly what we want. So make sure that you run this if you want to follow along for the next few videos. And this is what we'll be using as we work through the next videos to, to figure out and learn how you can explore your data set.